Guys, this is Ryan Fee for UpslingPoker.com, and what we're going to be talking about today is four betting and five betting strategy pre-flop in No Limit Hold'em. So, you know, let's start with sort of why you would four or five bet. Um, you know, the first thing that comes to mind, specifically when four betting or five, is sort of the same reason can go either way, is that you're going to do it for value. So you're going to do it with a hand, you know, like aces or kings. Um, and you know, it's like essentially like a hand like aces or kings are in many situations. Basically, the nuts pre-flop and ace, certainly in, in king's main situations, uh, almost definitely. Um, so, you know, you would just be raising them in order to get some value. Uh, so, you know, like, that's, you know, sort of going to be the core of like any four or five bet sort of range. Um, if you're going to four bet a hand like pocket queens, pocket jacks, ace king, oftentimes ace king will be four betting, or so four or five betting. Um, uh, or a hand like ace, so it's like really like ace queen, and oftentimes queens as well. So it's really like a hand like ace queen or really jacks and tens. Um, you know, it's like sort of like well, when do we four bet get those in for value, and uh, and then like you know like when when or what do we buff with? Uh, if you you know if you're playing live poker, uh, there's oftentimes situations where you should be four or five betting only aces or maybe you know like aces and sometimes kings, um, because again of how tight a, a three or four bet range is. In a live setting, you know, oftentimes players are calling hands pre-flop like queens or ace king because they just simply want three bet. That means you know their three bet could literally be a range of uh, a sort of kings plus, and uh, you know having having the four or five bet range with ace king or queens into a range of kings plus, not going to make you the most chips. So um, so yeah, so the reason you know so sort of the reason you, you might four bet um, you know a value hand or is, or is is you know based on like its sort of strength. Can you get value? So like aces can sort of always get value on the like queens, jacks, or tens. Can you get value if you're up against a looser, wider three betting range preflop, um, and you know, and then like, <clears throat> if you are going to be up against a looser range preflop, then you might also consider four bet bluffing. You also might consider four bet bluffing. I mean, there are some players that would three bet a hand like pocket queens or like ace king, but then might fold to a four bet or a five bet, sort of almost like irrationally. Like why would you know? Sort of why would you three bet these hands to then fold to the to another raise? But um, I, you know, it's not impossible to live setting to have again a four or five bet range of. Specifically, aces or you know a bluff, and and the bluff, the best bluff would sort of be what we're about to talk about is a suited ace. So, all right, we're gonna check out my desktop real quick, and what we have here is this is a range right out of the Upswing Poker Lab, and what it is is the um, it's the range for when we raise first in in the hijack, um, and oh, I'm sorry, wrong range, wrong range. This is the range for when we raise first in the hijack and the cutoff three bets us. It's like, well, how do we play? Um, and all the hands in red are raised. All the hands in green are called green or call. The light green is call or fold. Um, the pink is raise or fold, and uh, the sort of orange, orange yellow is is also raise or fold. <clears throat> so, if we're looking at this range again, if we're like sort of talking about you know our value range, it's like okay, yeah, queens plus ace king. Again, these ranges are built as a sort of late position situations, hijack versus cutoff. And um, these ranges are also geared towards more of like an online cash game setting. So getting in Queens plus Ace King in this situation, an online cash game, basically read list is almost always fine. Um, and that's why, and then sort of the jacks is sort of the optional thing that you could get in for value pre-flop uh, from these positions. And then, you know, but when it comes to bluffing, um, you know, you want to pick the best bluffs. And the best bluffs are tend to be suited aces, wheel suited aces. And the reason is because, well, there's several reasons. The first reason, the biggest reason, is removal. Um, when you're four betting, you want, the, you know, if you're four betting, you're four bet bluffing, the way you're going to make the most chips is by getting your opponent to fold. Um, your opponent folds when they don't have a hand like aces or ace king. So, since, you know, those are sort of the top of, you know, sort of the top of the range, those are the hands that are going to be most, most often continuing versus the four bet, it's good to have an ace in our hand to make it less likely, to make it more likely they have a hand like king queen or maybe, you know, it's eight nine eight nine eight two it's seven six two it's something like that. Um, so first of all, removal. Second thing is that it's suited, um, and it's suited and connected. So we'll, we'll sort of talk about those things, you know, because like for instance, in this range, you'll see sort of ace five is a mandatory three bet, whereas ace six is optional. The reason is because by I mean like when the hand is suited, it just gives you more sort of equity in the pot. It gives you a way to sort of like win the pot. Um, so you know by flopping a flush draw or gut shot in a flush draw or just a gut shot. It gives you, you know, some equity in the pot, <clears throat> or rather, you know, I'm saying, I guess, gut shot on the five often times, five be able to continue. I mean, you could also, again, use both your cards to make a straight. You're gonna make a lot more straights in the flop with ace five than you are with ace six. Um, so, sort of like for that reason, you know, the, the, there's like a bit of equity there. And again, 
these hands are all ranking higher than you know what would be stronger hands because in those pots th there isn't much of a difference in a pair value between a five and a nine in a four bet pot. Um, so you know since since a five and a nine have roughly the same pair value, it's like well okay, you know wh why select one or the other? And the answer is since you can use both your cards to make a straight, make more straights, thus have more equity and you know be able to realize more equity. Move this over a little bit. Um, uh, and have a better chance to win that pot. Um, and then <clears throat> the other thing is that, you know, I guess sort of the other virtue that's towards a hand like this is that, uh, you know, you'll make, you can make, I mean, an ace, there's no, there's no real card higher than the ace, there's no pair higher than the ace. So when you are making top pair, the only way that you can really be beat is for them to have, also have an ace with a better kicker. Um, and, you know, again, it's going to be unlikely because you'll have an ace in your hand and they'll get an ace on the board, so there's only going to be two aces left in the deck. Um, and while, you know, a call four or five bet, uh, specifically, in this instance, going to be a call of four bet range. Will oftentimes contain an ace. Again, it will be less likely. And if they were calling four bets with hands like, you know, eights or jacks or whatever, <clears throat> uh, you you, know, you would now have top pair. And you have a very like sort of dominating top pair. For instance, if you even had, you know, even if we just changed sort of ace five to king five suited, um, you know, uh, let's say you flop top pair with ace five, and your opponent has king queen, um, they're drawing dead for the most part on most boards. Whereas Let's say you know you four bet king five suited, and you flop a king, but your opponent has ace queen. Your opponent now has you know three outs to basically just, you know send you to be basically drawing dead. Um, so there's just like sort of like an added equity in having what the high the highest possible pair is. So sorry. So let's just talk about like sort of what's going on in this range. So you know we're opening in the hijack. Um, we'll go real quick. Uh, you can download these ranges for free on our website, but. I believe this is the hijack, or uh, this is a bit, a bit looser, this is a bit of a looser range, this is the lab range, I mean those ranges are a bit looser for, um, uh, for some like, reasons, they, they work well on online games, but, uh, but yeah, so this is sort of our, you know, suggested race versus in range here, uh, I believe this range is, can be up to, um, up to almost 20, 26% of hands, so it could be quite loose. Um, so it makes a lot of sense for a player in late position, player, uh, a player in the cutoff, to be three-betting a lot of hands. So. You know, if we were to face a three bet, um, you know, essentially to be denying, denying some of our worst races preflop, uh, you know, we would want to four bet hands for value, and then you know, also hands for bluff, because you know, if if we look at if we then go here and look at again, this is like, these are our ranges. You know, we don't want to project what we're doing too hard on our opponents, but it's certainly possible that um, they'll, they'll play a, use a somewhat similar strategy. So this is this is what our sort of suggested uh, hijack. Versus, or sorry, cutoff range versus a hijack race versus in ranges. And if you look at this, um, there are, let's see, so if we, we click the red, this red button, this red one up here, well, it says discounts, this is percentage of hands. So this is 4%. Um, we could also 3 bet all of these hands, this is almost 3%, and all these pink hands, this is almost 4.5%. So we could easily be up to, if we were going for, you know, sort of the full 3 bet strategy, we could have an over 10% 3 bet here. This is a situation where you would definitely want to exercise sort of all of your four bets here, you know, jacks for value, maybe even tens, and then all these four bet bluffs. And the reason is because the cutoff range is going to have a lot of weak hands. Um, so, you know, in, in essence, the reason that you're going to to four bets, there's going to be you know, one of two reasons. The first reason is going to be just purely for value. You're going to make more chips by raising um, than by calling, and that you know, if a hand like aces or ace king, you have an opportunity to get get all the money in with the best hand. Um, and then the, sort of the other side of that coin is a hand like ace five through you know your sort of your bluffs, right? It's like, well, why would you bluff? The reason you would bluff is because you, you need to shut down their ability. You're trying to shut down their ability to three bet you. Um, you know, the biggest sort of challenge for an aggressive three bet strategy like the one I just showed you, like the one we would advocate, is facing four bets. Is because if your opponent can only fold or call the raise, the, you should almost three bet you know any hand because. Um, there's a chance they fold, you win the pot, you have 100% equity in the pot right there. And if they call, you're going to play this big pot in position with a hand that now has equity. Whereas if they raise, your hand's going, your, your equity in the pot will go to zero. So let's take a hand again, like, let's take a hand like seven, six, two, let's say we, um, you know, we're the cutoff player and the hijack raises, we three bet a hand like seven, six, two, there's a great chance they fold, we pick up the whole pot right there. And if they call, again, we're going to play that big pot in position and have equity. We're going to win that pot. We're going to make the best hand. We're going to bluff sometimes. We're going to win that pot. We're going to have equity. Whereas if they four bet and then we're forced to fold seven six, all of a sudden we now have zero percent equity in a you know a, a pot which is now you know, we three bet we'll three bet let's say nine nine ten big blind something like that um, in a nine or ten big blind pot. 
rather than having, let's say, 50% equity in a 20 big blind pot. Um, so <clears throat> it ends up working out, you know, sort of like quite poorly. It, it, it ends up making us sort of almost gun shy or, or hesitant to one of three bet hands. We want to pick sort of our three bets or three bets very carefully because we know that we could be up against a four bet. So, in other words, when it comes to four betting, you want to four bet against aggressive three bet strategies because it puts them in tough spots because they simply don't have, especially when you're picking the suited aces, uh, you know, for sort of like good rule purposes, your opponents simply don't have enough good hands to continue. It's not like, there's just simply nothing they could do because you're also going to have, you know, sort of really good hands. So when they have like all these sort of middling hands, they're in a tough spot and, you know, you're sort of denying their profitability um, on their three bets. So that's sort of the dis when it comes to three betting. When it comes to five betting though, it's quite, what, the math ultimately works out sort of poorly in a lot of five bet situations. That's why you won't see many players, you know, many, many good players be five betting very light hands. Oftentimes your five bet range will contain jacks plus or ace king. Um, and that's because oftentimes a call five bet range is also jacks plus queens plus ace king. Um, and you know, if you look at, if you, you know, sort of look at the equity of many, you know, really any worse hand, Versus a range of you know, queens, queens or jacks plus ace king, oftentimes they have you know equity that's like in the 30s basically. So it ultimately makes it such that a lot of five bets it's going to be like you know raised to two to three, three bet to seven to ten, four bet to seventeen to twenty three or something, and then ultimately you would be shoving for around eighty big ones to win about thirty big ones, something thereabout or sorry rather um, did I get that right? Three four bet yeah about or sorry about ninety big ones. Um, so it just simply makes the math sort of unfavorable for a, a bluff uh, for, for you to bluff five bet. So ultimately, what ends up happening is you call the four bet a lot, and then you just really just sort of end up five betting um, five betting your good hands. There are a couple situations where if you get you know, and it's mostly butt off cutting, butt off cutting, <laughs> cut off button, or button small blind, um, maybe big blind small blind where players are playing really loose pre-flop, um, you know, and like really aggressive three bet strategy and four bet strategies are okay. And then at that point, somebody would maybe be folding to a five bet enough to make the math work on that. But for the most part, if you're five betting online, you're gonna want to have jacks plus ace king or calling five bet jacks plus ace, tens plus ace king. Uh, maybe it's been suited. Um, but yeah, like for the most part, you just, you're, you're better off calling, you're getting a great price in your four bet, just call the four bet. Um, and yeah, you should be, you know, for the, there are some spots where, yes, shoving like some small pairs, some wheel aces that could definitely be better than calling or a very good option, a very profitable option. And again, you know, sort of make it so that you're sort of almost defending your three bets. Like we were talking about sort of defending, you know, sort of your raises and shutting down their three bets. You can sort of, def, you know, um, shut down their four bets or defend your three bets by having a, a looser five bet range. But those tend to be very aggressive situations. And, and, you know, those don't, those don't come up too much. They're mostly, they happen oftentimes times in like very tough mid stakes games where the players are playing really loose and aggressive pre-flop. Um, that said, for you live guys, I would say, you know, in general, the five bet range, queens plus ace king for 100 big lines or less, especially later position, but oftentimes just like kings plus is, uh, you know, possibly the way to go. Um, you know, if, if anything, if anything you need, you know, sort of like to figure out like, well, how, what should we, how should we play, what should we play, you know, what should we, what do we do, is just think about when people, like, do you see opponents oftentimes four bet fold or when people get all their money in pre pop how often do you see a hand that isn't aces or kings? Um, I think if you just sort of anecdotally go through that, you know, you'll notice, oh yeah, they just they just really always have aces or kings. And a lot of players, even break players for like three betting ace king pre-flop, and that'll sort of give mentality psychology of how they like to play pre-flop. Um, and you know, it'll make it so that understand they're pretty tight. Um, but what you can do to take advantage of that is you can three bet them, or you can raise again a lot when you know, sort of when they're left to act, these players left to act because they won't be blowing you off of your hand, they're gonna be folding or calling to the three bet or folding to calling to your raise, not three betting you, and then you realize a hundred percent equity um, with your weaker hands, and it's gonna help you like sort of you know turn marginal or, or sort of minus EV close spot hands into profitable hands and, and ultimately make you a you know a winning player. So I hope you guys like this video. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope your four and five bets go really well in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you did, you can subscribe to our Upswing Poker YouTube channel by clicking right here. Uh, if you want to find more videos uh, of me, you can sub subscribe to my YouTube channel right here. And if you want to ask us a question or follow us on social media, click right down here, and you'll be taken to our, uh, our social media page at upswingpoker.com.